morning. Good morning. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Welcome to St. James. It's good to see everybody. Just a couple of quick announcements uh, related to our worship service. First, I want to recognize all of our uh, musicians up here. I want to welcome Ian Leger, our cellist, for this morning. And I want to thank Austin um, for his leadership of our musical group. As you can imagine, uh, this is a really big week. Lots of services, Thursday night, Friday night, last Sunday, lots of different pieces of music um, to rehearse and practice. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, and I just want to recognize their hard work. And I also want to say that I am sure that all these folks up here would be super thrilled to hear all of you singing along uh, with all programs. The words will be projected on the screen in front of you. Um, one quick, a couple quick notes. The photo that you see was taken this morning courtesy of Troy Magnuson at our community Easter sunrise service. As you can see, we actually had a sunrise um, and it was a beautiful, beautiful service. So I wanted to thank Troy for, uh, for providing that, that photo for us. Uh, I want, uh, I have a message to share uh, from Sherry and Steve Dumas, those of you who are members here at St. James and know Sherry and Steve, know that they have spent, between the two of them, probably more days in the hospital these last couple of months than out of the hospital. Uh, they are both home uh, recuperating and doing well, and Sherry and I spoke this week, and she asked that I just pass on a big word of, uh, of thanks and gratitude for all of your prayers and thoughts and concerns while they've been uh, hospitalized. They're home and doing well, recuperating. Let's see, oh, one other thing I wanna do. Kathy, what's that thing that you usually do at the end of the service? Yahoo! Okay, all right, good. <laughs> you know, that, that was before my time. I forget who that originated with. Edie Peterson. Okay, I never knew her. She was before no. my time here, but I have noticed that coming out of COVID, uh, we used to do that at the end of the service, right? Every time everybody would do that. Yeah. And coming out of COVID, it kind of tapered off and it was like only you, I think, yeah. for a, a year or so. So be at the very end of the service, be ready for the... Yahoo! Okay, good. <laughs> for communion, all are welcome to receive. We invite you to come down the center aisle. I will have the bread. There are two cups. The darker cup on the inside is filled with wine. The lighter cup is filled with grape juice. And you're welcome to dip, dip the bread into whichever cup you choose. If you need gluten-free bread when you come forward, just let me know, and I'll make sure that you get that. Okay, great. Okay. And when you come down for communion, just be careful, because there's a lot of stuff up here, so don't, don't trip. All right, Christ arose. One, two, three. <laughs>
Gracious God, we give you thanks for this beautiful day, for this opportunity to gather together, to worship you, to shout alleluia, and remember that you, with this morning, have changed everything. We pray, Lord, that in those moments of life when we're feeling like we're on top of the world, that you would remind us that you are there to celebrate with us, and that you would remind us that when we walk through the shadowy valleys, that you are there as well, walking alongside us every step of the way. We give you thanks, Lord, for the joy of this morning, and we pray that you would help us to celebrate it. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and also, also with you. you. Let's offer one another a sign of God's peace.
please be seated. The good news for this morning is from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. A reading from Acts. P Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread through Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please stand. I'd like to invite the children to come forward and gather on the steps as we sing our gospel acclamation. Since this is a new gospel acclamation, uh, we're going to sing it once first and then have the congregation join. this morning comes from Mark's gospel. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And ver very early on, on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. Please be seated. Good morning. How are you all doing? Good. Happy Easter. All right, you having a good Easter so far? Everybody have a good week? Okay, good. Um, can everybody see this little screen right here? Yes. Oh, you got you were sick. You were sick earlier this week. All right, are you feeling better now? Good, that's good. Okay, can everybody see this little screen right here? Okay, so I'm I'm gonna I have some questions for you. I want you to look at these pictures here. Okay, so what if you met a dog, but it said meow? What would you think? Take it to the doctor. Roman says take it to the doctor. Good one. <laughs> good. Job. What else, Khaleesi? Okay, it might be a cat dressed as a dog. Emma, what were you gonna say? Okay. 
Okay. What else? What do you think? I ate a cat. Yeah, okay. It's got a cat in its tummy. Jordan. Dog dressed as a cat. Allie Mae, one more on this one. A dog that didn't want to bark. These are all really great answers. Would that be a little confusing, though, if you ran into this dog and it was meowing? Okay. What's the dog supposed to do? Yeah. Okay, okay. How about this? Now, what if you met a cat and it was barking? A really big, deep bark. Hannah, what do you think? Amazing. Yeah, what else? Jane. Cat ate the dog. Bizarre, yes, that's one of the words I'm looking for. Take that one to the doctor too, yeah, good. <laughs> Khaleesi, you what? You'd be fine with it? You just call it dog, that's its name, okay, good. All right, last one. What if you, um, what if you went in your room and your goldfish was mooing like a cow? Amazed, right? That would be weird, right? Take it back to, get a new one, right? Okay. <laughs> These are all, you know what? Yes, okay, so these are, you said, if I remember correctly, you said, you know, bizarre, weird, amazing, are those some of the words that we would use if these things, we experience these things, right? Okay, this is good, because the story that we just read, I think, has all of those same things in it. There were these three friends of Jesus. Two of them were named Mary, and the other one was named Sal, and they were really, really good friends with Jesus, and they were super upset seen him die, and they saw him be put in this grave, and they saw this giant stone, you know, be rolled over the front of the grave, and so when they went back to that place, they were really upset, and they just wanted to go back one more time to kind of say goodbye to their friend Jesus. Everything that they saw, their reactions were like what you described just now. They thought it was bizarre. Uh, they thought it was kind of amazing. They thought it was weird. They thought it was strange. They thought something was not right with this. And do you know what they did at the, at, the, at the end of this story? They ran off. They ran home because they didn't know what to do. It was so strange. Okay, so those, those animals making those noises would be really, really weird, right? Yeah. Creepy, right? It's another word. They were scared. They didn't know what was going on. Allie Mae, how about you? They didn't even know that he had a cat. Oh, right. They didn't understand this. And there was a person there that was kind of mysterious, and he said, don't worry about any of this. Might have been too loud. Okay, there you go. Um, and there's a person there who said, you know, I know you're scared and I know this is weird, this is bizarre and it's strange, uh, but don't worry, it's all going to make sense. You're going to see Jesus again because he, God, has raised Jesus up to new life. He's not dead, he's living, and you will see him again. And that was really strange to them too. But later on, they did run into Jesus and he reminded them that everything was okay. That is, as strange as it might sound, the story of Easter. That's why we celebrate and get, you know, all dressed up and show up here with the flowers and everything. That's why we're here to celebrate. Um, does that make sense? Is it a little weird, too? Yeah. A little bit bizarre. And that's how the story is. It's one of those things in life that we just, we think about, and sometimes all we can do is just thank God and come to places like this and sing and do all of that stuff. But I'm very glad that you're here. Are you going to stick around for the Easter egg hunt after? You going to do that? All right, good. I'm glad. Can we do a little prayer real quick? Right, if you want to close your hands, you can. If you want to close your eyes, you can do that too. If you'd like to repeat after me, you can do that. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying and rising and loving all of us, no matter what. And can we say amen? Amen. Thank you for coming up. Happy Easter. Thank you. pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the joy of this Easter morning. We thank you for all that this day holds for us, this opportunity to be with one another, to worship, to 
raise our voices in song and prayer to come to your table and certainly to hear the story of this amazing, amazing thing that you have done for our entire creation and for everyone who ever lived. We pray, Lord, that as we worship, you would help us to celebrate knowing that you are fully, completely in all things right here with us. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, uh, has anyone here ever heard of the Republic of San Marino? Does anybody know where that is? A couple people do know where that is. Okay, uh, until a few weeks ago, I had never heard of it. But in these last couple of weeks, thanks mostly to a segment on NPR that I listened to while driving, I've learned a little bit about this interesting place and the people who live there. This is gonna sound a little bit like maybe a third grade social studies project, but just hang in there with me for a little bit, okay? San Marino is a microstate located within Italy. It is the fifth smallest country in the world. The entire nation has an area of only 23 and one half miles, square miles. For comparison, by the way, Rhode Island has an area of over 1,200 square miles, so San Marino is tiny. As of 2022, there were a little over 33,000 citizens of this tiny country. Some interesting facts about San Marino. The, the geography is hilly as the country lies within the Apennine mountain range. San Marino is one of only three countries in the world to be completely enclosed within another nation. San Marino enjoys a humid subtropical climate. There are reportedly more vehicles than people in San Marino. It's a decent place to visit. Over two million tourists travel there each year though most people only stay for one to two nights. I guess you can see all of it in just that short time. And maybe the most interesting thing about the small nation of San Marino is this. They have their own national football soccer team. And these guys, they were the focus of that NPR segment that I listened to in my car a few weeks ago that caught my attention introduced me to San Marino, a place that, as you can tell, I have become mildly obsessed with since. The San Marino national football team from this tiny nation is completely remarkable. In their history of playing on the world stage, they have played over 200 matches, and they have lost nearly all of them. In fact, they have only one win. But that one win was in a friendly, which means an exhibition game, so it didn't really count, against Liechtenstein, which, by the way, is the sixth smallest country in the world. <laughs> Let me say that again. Since their inception as a national team in 1986, the San Marino football team has never won a competitive match. If you visit the FIFA website this morning, you will find that they are ranked number 210 worldwide, which puts them in last place without a single meaningful win in their entire history. As we gather here to celebrate this morning, we know it is undeniable that Jesus scored some major wins in his life on earth. He fed thousands of people. He changed water into wine. He stilled the storms. He raised the dead. He walked on water. He accumulated thousands of followers. And we are still telling his story today. There is no doubt about it that Jesus knew what it felt like to be completely on top of the world, to experience tremendously victorious things. And in the story of the life of Jesus, there is no greater win, no greater victory than the one we gather to celebrate right here this morning. And yet as we gather, the final words of Jesus' story from Mark's Gospel end with three women, good friends of Jesus, fleeing, running, filled with terror and amazement. They don't know what to say. They can't even speak because they are so completely scared from what they've just seen. This is not exactly how stories of victory end. This isn't usually what happens to people who find themselves on the winning end of things, running, fleeing, scared, and afraid. The fan base of the San Marino national football team have a nickname they call themselves, and I apologize, I'm gonna, I know I'm going to mispronounce this, but they call themselves Brigata Mai Una Gioia. And it translates to something like the Never Any Joy Brigade. <laughs> they wear scarves that say, if you don't cheer for us when we lose, don't cheer for us when we win. 
The fans of this football team know what it feels like to lose. In fact, that's pretty much all they know. But that doesn't stop them from rooting for their national players. Though they've never won a competitive match, though they call themselves the Never Any Joy Brigade, their spirit is undefeated. And more importantly, they are undefeatable. One San Marino fan might have put it best when he said, ours is the story of an underdog. If you are a real lover of football, you are always looking out for the underdog. When he was feeding thousands or changing water into wine or raising the dead, Jesus probably didn't seem like much of an underdog. When he was transformed on the mountaintop or when he walked on water and stilled the storms, he probably seemed like the furthest thing from someone accustomed to losing. When he rode into the city of Jerusalem with a crowd following him, shouting Hosanna, waving palm branches, he must have seemed majestic, triumphant, victorious. And yet in spite of all the winning, triumphant moments of his life on earth, Jesus' story, as we know, ends in crushing defeat. In the end, when the cross is raised, when Jesus breathes his last breath, when the stone is rolled in place at his tomb, when he has been completely uh, defeated, his followers, no matter how faithful they had been, no matter how loud their shouts during that palm procession, in the end, they all become a joyless, scattered brigade. I'm not sure what San Marino fans will have to do if their team eventually wins a game. Until then, I guess they'll show up and laugh and cry and wave their scarves and cheer whether their team wins, it hasn't happened yet, or whether it loses. They know what it's like better than anyone in the world to root for the underdog and find hope in the face of nothing but loss. To me, the story of Jesus is not a story of victory. It's not a story of people who always find themselves on the winning end of life. To me, the story of Jesus is the story of the God who knows what it feels like to stand on the mountaintop and bask in the glow of glorified moments. But it's also the story of the God who is deeply acquainted with the feeling of walking through the shadowy valley where all you can do is fear for your life. The story of Jesus is the story of the God who enters fully into the full, complete experience of what it means to be human. God right here with us. Just when it looks like the story will end in total defeat, when things can't possibly get any worse, when the cross is raised and God's last breath is breathed, when people flee from shadowy places that don't make sense, when we all find ourselves in that joyless brigade, not sure what to make of what's happening around us. When all of that happens, God shows up with something amazing. The cross was raised, the Son of God was defeated completely. All of that is true. But today, God rolls away every stone, God clears every path, the sun rises once more, and with it, so does Jesus, and so do you. If you feel completely undefeated at this moment in life, if you feel that good, honestly, that must feel awesome, and I'm happy for you. If you feel like lately you've been stuck on a losing streak that's lasting a little bit longer than you would like it to, if you feel like you're really due for just even one small winning moment, or if you feel like you've never won anything meaningful in your life, and God, I hope no one feels that way. If you're anywhere in the mix there, between losing and winning, failure and success, today is a day for you and for me. It's a good reminder. The winning streaks don't tell the whole story. You can ask Jesus about that. The number of losses don't define who you are. You can ask the San Marino footballers and their fans about that. Because truly, at the end of the day, because of this day, we learn, we are reminded, that we are all loved by a God who is willing to lose it all, lose everything, so that you and I never will. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand and sing our song of the day, He Lives.
please stand. Let us pray. Gracious God, all that we have and all that we are comes from you. We pause as we worship to offer some of that back. We offer the gifts in these plates, but more importantly, we offer the gifts of ourselves, our time, our energy, our love for you and our love for this world that is big enough to give all that we have for you and for your people. We ask that you would help us to give cheerfully and to entrust all of this to you through Jesus our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Great job. Let us pray. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church, where the church is persecuted, protect it, where the church is privileged, grant it humility, where the church is fractured, heal it. Guide us all to embody Christ's love in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Life-giving God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with branches lifted in praise and roaring waters of new life, that together we may proclaim Easter hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all peoples and nations, free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse. Teach leaders your way of justice. Empower peacemakers and all who work to end violence and strife, especially in Ukraine, Palestine, and Israel. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Liberating God, we pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe new life and hope into people struggling to make it through each day. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, we pray for this community of faith and for your spirit in our midst. Feed us at your Easter table and fill us with your wisdom that we may serve and care for others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. 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 As I mentioned earlier, all are welcome to receive communion. You're invited to meet us uh, at the foot of the stairs. I will have the bread. If you need gluten-free bread, just let me know when you come forward again. The darker cup on the inside, this one right here, is filled with wine. The lighter cup, which looks like this, is, um, is filled with grape juice, and you're welcome to dip the bread into whichever cup you choose. We will start with this side of the sanctuary first. You'll be welcome to come down and receive communion, return to your seat by the side aisle, then we'll switch over and welcome all of you to come forward as well. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed and arrested, the night when he gave himself up for us, he shared a meal with his friends. At the table, he took bread, gave thanks to God, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This bread is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. When supper was over, he took the cup, and giving thanks to God, he gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. God of love, spirit of compassion, bless us and this bread and wine. May this meal be food and drink for our journey, renewing, sustaining, making us whole. When we eat this bread and drink from this cup, Jesus is truly here with us. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy thy will be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Bye. 
Please stand. Thank you. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have fed us at your table, and we give you thanks for this amazing meal, this gift of life. We pray that by receiving it, you would fill us with faith toward you and compassionate love toward the world you created. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Just a couple of quick announcements. Again, I want to thank, um, I want to thank our musicians, David, Karen, Kathy, Betty, Shelley, Austin, Ian. Uh, Ian, thanks so much for being here. Sounds, sounds tremendous. Thank you all for all your hard work uh, all year long, but particularly this week. Great, great job. Great music. Um, I want to thank Troy and Nicholas for serving as our live stream team this morning. Uh, for Jen and Joe for, for setting up the altar. I'd like to thank Jono for doing our first reading. Um, I want to thank the children for, for gathering the offering, and I want to thank all of you for worshiping here with us uh, this morning. Happy Easter. All are welcome to join us in the community room immediately after the service for an Easter breakfast and the children's Easter egg hunt. I want to thank the Whitaker family, the whole crew, uh, for, for hiding all those Easter eggs earlier today, and I, I believe that's all set to go for the children. Kids wait for, uh, I guess you gotta give them a signal, right? They don't just go. Okay, so go in, grab a, a snack, something to drink, um, and, uh, and feel free, uh, kids, to jump in on the Easter egg hunt, and everybody else have something to drink and something to eat. And that wahoo comes at the very end, right? After yes. the go in peace, serve the, the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah, and then everybody wow. yeah. Should we, should we practice it? We should practice it. Okay, can we practice that? Because everybody's got to do it. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Yahoo! Oh, good. All right, Come on, good. you can go louder than that. <laughs> All right, well, this was, that was a practice. All right, please stand. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the joy of this Easter morning, and we pray that you would... Help us to carry that with us throughout the rest of the day and throughout the rest of the week. But help us also to remember that when the sun isn't shining, when we don't feel as though we're on the mountaintop, as though we, when we feel as though we're walking through dark valleys, when life is difficult or we struggle or scary or we're not sure what to make of it, remind us that you are as close to us in those moments as you are right now. And you are always present at all times and in all places to bless us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Just, Our, can I say something about the flowers? Yes, please, I forgot that. So, the flowers in the windows are for the children, so they may, they may each take one um, home with them. Thank you. Our sending song is Amazing Grace. My aunt, or,
Hallelujah. Yahoo! <laughs> 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 My chains are gone.